Everyone's seen the base performance of an RTX 4070 Ti, but now with DLSS and frame gen on more and more games, what kind of performance is truly possible with one of these cards compared to what you saw at launch? I'll be using my trusty Zotac Trinity to explore the extreme amounts of performance available to RTX 4070 Ti users. So how are we going to do it? Well, first we're going to set everything to ultra and turn on ray tracing so we're working from the highest levels of visual quality. Then we're going to use DLSS to render everything at around 1080p resolution. That means our 1440p monitors will be rendering using quality settings, our 600p monitor will be using balance settings, and our 2160p monitor will be using performance settings. This lines up with what AAA developers are recommending people use on their latest games. And this will give us a roughly equivalent visual fidelity across all of our resolutions. And then we will apply frame generation to all of our games. And we will use ray reconstruction where available. I have nine games that support the full array of DLSS 3 features. One thing to keep in mind when looking at the results is that DLSS frame generation requires extra GPU resources to run, including memory. And so as these resources run out, the returns on frame generation drop. With all that out of the way, I'm gonna flash the specs of my test system on screen now. So you can pause the video if you wanna take them in. Now, let's get into those results. First up is Cyberpunk using its Ultra RT preset. Cyberpunk's ray tracing has always been hard to run, and as you can see, without the aid of DLSS, the 4070 Ti is only able to cross the 30 FPS mark at 1440p altwide resolution. The 600p altwide is getting unacceptable performance, and the super altwide is a stuttering mess, and the 2160p altwide is completely unplayable due to lack of memory. Turning on DLSS changes everything, getting both the 1440p and 1600p altwides over 60 FPS, and the Super Altwide and the 2160p Altwides are now getting a reasonably acceptable performance level. Turning on frame generation sees the 1440p and 1600p Altwides get an additional smoothness, but are only seeing a 33% gain in FPS. The Super Altwide and 2160p Altwide are seeing almost no gains from frame gen as they have no extra resources to spare for the tech. Next up is Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, played on its high preset. Another punishing game sees a 4070 Ti get only the 1440p and 1600p altwides over 30 FPS, which is a playable frame rate in this game. The Super Altwide and 2160p Altwide both fall below 30 FPS. Turning on DLS upscaling gets all resolutions to an acceptable frame rate, and when frame gen is turned on, we see the 1440p altwide resolution close to double its FPS, landing in the high refresh rate range. The 4070 Ti gets smooth refresh rates for the three other resolutions, but sees declining frame gen performance as the resolution goes up. Next up, we have Starfield on Ultra settings. The 4070 Ti delivers a smooth gameplay experience at both 1440p and 600p altwide resolutions, and manages acceptable performance at the 1440p super altwide resolution, and falls just shy at 2160p altwide resolutions. Turning on upscaling moves everything up a performance tier or two, and the TI now delivers high refresh rates at two of the resolutions and smooth for the other two. Turning on frame generation gets the two lower resolutions to very high refresh rate range, and the two higher ones into high refresh rates. Next up is Star Wars Jedi Survivor, played on its epic preset with RT on. The 4070 achieves acceptable performance at 1440p and 600p, but falls out of desirable range for the Super Altwide and 2160p resolutions. When turning on DLSS upscaling, the 4070 Ti gets all four resolutions right around 60fps, with the two lower resolutions just above and the two higher just below. Once frame gen is turned on, we see the 1440p and 600p Altwides get a healthy jump in performance, hitting high refresh rates and the higher two resolutions are in smooth refresh rate range now. Next up we have Diablo 4 played on its ultra ray tracing preset. Here we see the 4070 Ti able to get a smooth FPS with the 1440p altwide and acceptable performance for the 600p altwide and the super altwide resolutions. The 2160p altwide however is well below acceptable frame rates. Turning on DLSS brings all resolutions into the smooth frame rate range, making them all good candidates for frame gen. The 4070 Ti sees good scaling and delivers very high refresh rates at 1440p and 600p altwide resolutions. The Super Altwide doesn't scale at all, but I'm chalking this one up to Diablo being weird about this resolution and not the 4070 Ti's fault, since it exhibits the same behavior on my 4090. The 2160p resolution makes it to high refresh rate range though, and has a rather poor scaling. 
Next up is Immortals of Avian on its Ultra preset. The 4070 Ti sees acceptable frame rates at the 1440p and 600p ultrawide resolutions, with the Super Ultrawide just falling short of that mark. The 2160p ultrawide is barely above 30fps, however. Turning on DLSS upscaling allows the 4070 Ti to get all resolutions above 60fps into smooth gameplay range. And when frame gen is used, the 1440p and 16p ultrawides make it to high refresh rates, while the Super Ultrawide and the 2160p ultrawide stay in smooth refresh rate range. Next, we have Forza Horizon 5 played on its Extreme preset with Extreme RT on. The 4070 Ti is able to get high frame rates for the 1440p ultrawide right out of the box, while all other resolutions are getting some nice smooth refresh rates. Turning on DLSS upscaling sees minimal gains as this game doesn't scale well with resolution, though the 600p ultrawide does manage to make it to high refresh rates. Turning on frame gen is the only way to get any kind of real FPS boost in this game, with both the 1440p and 1600p jumping up to very high refresh rates. The Super Ultrawide barely scoots into high refresh rate range, but the extra performance isn't worth having your native frame rate. The 2160p Ultrawide sees frame gen use more memory than DLSS performance saves, and overruns the VRAM, causing a nearly halving of performance. If this card had the 16GB of the Super variant, this situation would be avoided. Out of curiosity, because DLSS upscaling does so little, but uses the AI cores, frame gen does, I turned off DLSS on the 1440p resolution and just ran frame gen, and got a 1fps higher performance. Next up is Atomic Heart played on its max preset. The 4070 Ti gets the 1440p and 1600p ultrawides to smooth gameplay range, with the Super Ultrawide in acceptable range and the 2160p ultrawide lagging behind a bit. Turning on DLSS upscaling sees all resolutions achieve smooth frame rates, putting them in good position to leverage the frame generation which catapults the 1440p and 16p ultrawides to over 120fps gameplay, while the two higher resolutions are now delivering high refresh rates. Last we have Remnant 2 played on its Ultra preset. Here the 4070 Ti is getting acceptable frame rates for the 1440p and 16p resolutions, while the Super Ultrawide and 1440p Ultrawide see an undesirable performance. Turning on DLSS changes everything, with all resolutions getting a nice smooth gameplay experience. And when frame gen is turned on, the two lower resolutions get into high refresh rates, while the two high resolutions stay in smooth refresh rate range. When we examine the final results of all games, we see if you are just going to play at ultra settings, plus ray tracing at native resolution, only the 3440x1400p ultrawide would be getting a smooth 60fps, with both the 3840x1600p ultrawide and the 5120x1440p super ultrawide getting acceptable frame rates and the 5120x2160 be ultrawide struggling with a frame rate barely above 30 fps. Though, if you're willing to upscale from 1080p for each of these resolutions, then you can enjoy a nice smooth frame rate at every resolution, and putting the 4070 Ti in the perfect position to leverage frame gen at each resolution. While the 1440p and 16p ultrawide resolutions do see a significant boost in frame rate, getting them to high refresh rates, it ends up being less than half of the frame rate doubling one might have expected from turning on frame generation. The Super Ultrawide and 2160p Ultrawide fare even worse with frame gen as there are just not enough resources left to share with the tech at these high resolutions. RTX 4070 Ti users can expect to double their FPS if they're willing to use the full suite of NVIDIA features. Though, it's not all roses for RTX 4070 Ti users. Because FrameGen has a memory cost, it undoes a lot of the good work that DLSS upscaling does to reduce VRAM usage in memory intensive games, often leaving itself without the resources it needs to be very effective. So if you want to use this tier of GPU and use a very high resolution monitor, I would really point you towards the 4070 Ti Super, which has the extra VRAM you're going to need. For a lot of games, just using the DLSS upscaling to get over 60 FPS is going to give you a great gaming experience. And I would probably stay there, unless FrameGen can provide you at least 50% more frames. Now, if you can get to that 60 FPS mark, turning on FrameGen is going to provide you with a responsive and fun gaming experience for PvE content. For PvP content, Everyone agrees that turning on any kind of frame gen is going to be detrimental to your ability to win because it's going to add latency, and latency means losing. I have to say I was quite disappointed with the level of overhead that DLSS frame generation seems to have, especially coming off of my previous video where I looked at AMD Fluid Motion frames using the 7900 XT. 
which seems to have much lower overhead while providing a similar quality of generated frame. Now, the 700 XT does have double the memory of this card, so I'll be interested to see what the 4080 can do and see if it has better frame gen scaling than the 4070 Ti. That said, the RTX 4070 Ti, when leveraging the full suite of DLSS tools, is getting a very smooth play experience at our 1440p and 1600p ultra-wide resolutions. And almost all games are getting over 60 at our 1440p super ultra-wide and our 2160p ultra-wide resolutions too, with only Cyberpunk 2077 missing that mark. Due to its intense VRAM usage with all that ray tracing, it means that when frame generation is turned on, it just doesn't have enough resources to work with to get it over the line. This means in my initial review when I said that the RTX 4070 Ti was a great 1440p and 600p ultra-wide card, but wasn't suitable for higher resolutions, stands true, even when using the full set of DLSS tools. Now, the 4070 Ti Super with its extra VRAM should be able to play at these higher resolutions. Thank you for watching. Subscribe so you don't miss any more of these max performance videos. Now why don't you go ahead and watch that 7900XT max performance video that I already have out. And let me know if you want to see a head to head between these two cards with their max performance. I'm Scott and I'll see you next time Ultrawide fans.